Welcome, welcome, welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Sheila. I hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day. Today's story is called The Books and Bricks. A book or two washing built to school. <gasps> is that not incredible? Let's find out about it, okay? Okay. From sunrise to sunset, young Booker walked, worked hard. He carried water to the fields. He carried corn to the mill. He carried rocks from the yard. All day long, Booker lugged heavy loads with a heavy heart because he was a slave. Oh, that would not be nice. But one day he was told to carry something new, books, for his master's daughter. When he arrived at the schoolhouse on top of the hill, Booker stole a look inside. He saw strange lines on the backboard that formed letters and he saw groups of letters that made words. And suddenly, Booker's heavy heart felt a little lighter. He knew there was something special about those letters. He felt magic in those words. Booker wanted to learn to read more than anything, but his dream seemed impossible. There he's looking. After Booker turned nine, America's battle over slavery was finally over. The Civil, War, the Civil War had ended. All slaves were free. Booker didn't feel free. He had to work long hours in a salt mine so his family could survive. All the schools near him were for white students only. So Booker begged his mother for a book of his own. And somehow, as often happens with mothers, a miracle appeared. Without a pennies in her pockets, she got Booker an old Webster spelling book. He studied those shapes called letters. He learned groups of letters that made words. He taught himself to read, but he wanted to learn more. Then Booker went to work in a coal mine while shoveling heavy piles of coal all day. Out of only one thing, Google. One morning, whispers echoed through the mine. A school for black students? Somewhere in Virginia, Booker couldn't believe his ears. A school for him? Oh, but Virginia was 500 miles away. He had no money for a train ride, no money for books. So Booker kept working and saving and dreaming of school. In time, he made the long trip to Virginia walking and begging rides most of the way. At 16, Booker finally carried his home books to school. He graduated three years later and went back to his hometown to teach at a school for black students. He wanted to help others who shared his dream of learning. Later, folks from a small town in Alabama invited him to teach there. So Booker packed his clothes, books, and watch, the only valuable thing he owned, and moved to the green hills of Tuscany. He found it. He found lots of eager students there, but no school building. Booker searched the town until he found it in an old shed he could use. The building had no windows or doors and huge holes in the roof, but it was all he had. Mm. Soon the whole town of Tuscany was talking about Booker's school. Dozens of students lined up for the first day. They squished and squeezed inside the tiny shed. Each week, the school became more crowded. When it rained, students took turns to hold an umbrella over Booker so he could teach. Booker knew his students needed a real building, a school of their own, so he decided to build one brick by brick. Booker borrowed money to buy a deserted farm, near 20 acres of land. Then came the hard part, getting bricks to build the school walls. With no brickyard in town, Booker decided to make his own. He read about different kinds of clay. He studied how to mold and bake bricks, and he learned how to lay them into a tall, sturdy wall. It's so important to learn. Soon, Booker and his students started digging for clay. They dug for hours. They dug for days, but no clay. They dug deeper holes. They dug Huge muddy pits, still no clay. Booker's hands blistered. His tired back ached. He was covered in mud, and his knees were caked. 
but he kept digging until he found it rich, red Alabama clay. Woohoo! Booker and his students mixed mud into the clay and had a straw to hold the sticky mixture together. They molded the mixture into thick slabs and smoothed the sides straight. They molded and smoothed again and again. They made 25,000 bricks. Ooh, wow. Then Bucker built a mighty kin, 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 and he filled it with thousands of clay slabs and fanned the flames till they burned red heart. The red brick started to sizzle, and then the kin broke. All the bricks were ruined. Students made thousands more bricks. Booker built a second kin, but it broke too. Oh my goodness, the students were exhausted. They wanted to quit, but Booker wouldn't give up. Other teachers joined the hired work crew. They helped build a third kin. It failed after burning a week. More useless bread. With no money to build another kin, the teachers told Booker to forget about making bricks. Stop wasting his time. <gasps> time! Then Booker remembered his precious watch. He decided, he decided to sell it to pay for another kin. This oven baked just right and made beautiful bricks. Booker was finally ready to build the school. So there's the kin, like, baking the bricks. Students mixed up big buckets of mortar. Booker grabbed a twirl and, and spread the mortar, smooth and even. He gently tapped brick, brick into place. Four sturdy walls rose from the ground. Windows were hung. Hammer started to pound. Students nailed on a new waterproof roof. Then Booker installed a fine front door, a door to welcome everyone. More students kept arriving, so Booker kept building. More digging, more molding, more bricks were baked. More fingers blistered, more tired blacks ached. New buildings appeared, a dining hall, a chapel, and a dorm where students could live. Students built chairs, tables, and beds from wood. Wood scraps. They filled cloth sacks with pine needles to make mattresses. Now Booker's school was big enough for everyone who wanted to learn. His hard-working students went on to become successful teachers, business leaders, and more. Oh, thank goodness. Because Booker T. Washington had built an amazing school brick by brick. And so this is a quote from Booker T. Washington. Success is to be measured, not so much by the position that one has searched in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. Hmm. Well, he kept being encouraged and dreaming and did not stop. Thank goodness he made that building. So I hope you enjoyed the story. Until next time, we're to me, Michelle. You keep shining your light, bright. Bye for now.